All right, when working with HTML forms, often you're going to be doing validation with JavaScript and you want to know whether or not somebody has actually filled something in in your form. That's the most common thing to do with validation. I have a, an HTML form here. There's a input type equals text right here. Input type equals text. That's your basic text field. I have a select with a series of options. And the first option inside of here, this is the one that says, hey, you got to pick something. You'll notice every one of the options has a value attribute. The please select a province, that one I've left blank. So this is what I'm going to be looking for to make sure that somebody has something selected here. Uh, very often, browsers will by default select the first option inside of a, a field. Not all the browsers, the older browsers don't all do that, but you can assume that most of the browsers are going to be doing this. So if the first element is selected, then maybe you don't have the value that you really want. The final one I have here is an input type equals number. Right here, you can see the little up down arrows inside of here. This is a stepper. Uh, I've got the minimum set to 12, the maximum set to 120. Now that doesn't mean I can't type something else in there. So there's the number one typed into it. I can type in the number 150 and that's fine. I can still submit it. But for min and max, if I'm using the arrows, you see as soon as I click once, it goes to the max. If we had nothing inside of here, or I typed in three, as soon as I click up, there we are. That's the minimum. If you want a default value, you can actually put a default value in here. You can either set value equals to something, or there's default value is the other property. In JavaScript, you can set, you can ask for the default value, and that will be whatever the value attribute was holding when the page loaded. I'm going to leave this blank for now just to show you how you can do validation on that. So we have these three fields, an input text, an input number, and a select. And we want to know if the user has put something in here. When they click this button, I want to know, did they actually give me something? I've set the action on the form to Google, so if this form does submit, when I click this, it'll take us to the Google homepage. I have my standard DOM content loaded, event listener. When the, that fires, I'm going to add a event listener for the submit button. That's this go button right here. And I will call the function process form, which is all the code that we're going to do. Process form, very first thing I'm doing is EV prevent default. That is going to stop this submit button from accepting the click and telling the form, hey, the submit button's been clicked, you should submit the form. So I'm just stopping it outright. If at some point I want to actually submit it, I can get a reference to this form element and say submit. So right now, this prevent default stops the form going anywhere. But if I were to come in here and say, document query selector, get the first form on the page, and call its submit method. Refresh. There, it took me to Google. So if you ever need to actually submit the form after your validation, this is how you do it. All right, I have my username, I've got the province, I'm going to get a listing to the num field as well. I called it age. So actually, let's change this to age, just like that. All right, we have these three fields, and we want to start looking at them. Let's start with the text field. So I'll remove my comments. Click, oh, got to refresh this. I filled nothing in. I click go. And here we have the outputs. Type of, that's the first one. So the value that's coming back from an input type equals text is string. Doesn't matter what I put in there, I could put numbers in there, it's always going to be string. Same thing is going to happen with the age field. It doesn't matter that it's type equals number, it's still going to be a string. Everything that comes back from a form is a string. The value is what the user has typed inside there. 
so we're getting its length. Well, there's zero characters. I didn't type anything. However, if I put a whole bunch of spaces in there just to get around that simple validation of checking the length, what came in was a string. It was 16 characters long. This line right here, I'm putting an X on either side of the value. So you can see there's a whole bunch of spaces in between these two X's. The next one, I'm calling the trim method. I'm getting rid of the space, the leading and the trailing space. Therefore, there's nothing left in here. If we change this to be, say, a few spaces, some text, and then some more spaces, I click Go. Here we have the one without the trim, and here's the one with the trim. So we get rid of the space in front, the space behind, the leading and the trailing spaces. When you are going to be checking the length, you want to make sure that you're doing a trim before you get the length. We can combine these things together. I'll get rid of the axes on either side here, and I just want to say dot length. Oops, not the last index of, I want length. There we are. So what is the length of the value after it's been trimmed? Refresh this. So I've put a whole bunch of space on either side. I've put some text in the middle. And here we go. The length before the trim was 23. After the trim is 4. This is the length when you are doing validation. If you want to check and see if this length is greater than, I don't know, let's say 6. Put some spaces, type something in here. False. There we are. This is what you would put inside your if statement to see was the value that the person entered after I do a trim, was its length greater than 6? So I've got 7 or more characters in that case. All right, that's basic text input. Comment this out, go down to the select. For the select, I have nothing selected. By default, the browser is picking this first option, the one that had no value inside of it. So we're getting the, oops, sorry, that's not the refreshed version of the script. There we go. No, still not getting the latest version. Oh, I didn't save my form. Yeah, there we go. Got to save your script. Okay, for the select, type of string, so the value of the selected item in the select. Here's the select, the value of the selected option. The type of this is going to be string. Doesn't matter if this is a number, it's still going to come back and say that it's string. Value length, same thing that was happening up here is zero because there was nothing in the selected one. If I go to one of these, the value is going to be two. The length of it was two. We can get rid of the type of just to see what the value is. It's blank or MB. There we are. That's the value. And selected index if you think of this like an array, item 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Number 2 was the one that was selected, and that is the selected index property. This may be all that you need to find out whether or not somebody has selected. If you have this default property up at the top with no value, you can say, is the selected index greater than 0? If it is, then yes, I have actually picked something inside. If we leave it at this, the non-selected, it's false. If I pick something, true. So that's probably all you need for a drop-down list. All right, and then jumping into the last example when we're dealing with numbers. With nothing filled in, type of, the value, is string, even if we have something picked. Here's the min, here's the max, 12 and 120. Parse int. If you call parse int on an empty string, 
the value that you get back is going to be not a number. That's what this NAN stands for, not a number. Is not a number age.value? Well, if it's a string, it's going to come back and say true. This is saying false, which means it's either a number or it's an empty string. In this case, it's an empty string. So we can't just use this on its own. And then we can check parse int age.value. If it's less than the min, if it's greater than the max, then we're failing our validation. This is probably going to be the best choice for you right here. If you're dealing with a numeric field, take the value, parse it, turn it into an integer. Because if you try to do this and it's an empty string, what you'll get back is not a number. And then not a number is never going to work properly with these if statements here. If I type something inside, five, there we are. There's the five. True. It's less than the min, so that's failing a validation, but it's not greater than. If I click this now, pick some real value, I click go. There we are. I'm back to false. So in validating these numbers, I want to take parse int. I want to take parse int and make sure that that's okay. That's not coming back as not a number. If this is coming back as not a number, then I can take the parse int value and actually compare it. If it's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or less than, however you want to do this. If you want to do something, if the value isn't, if it's below the minimum or if it's above the minimum, you know, it depends on what you're trying to do with your validation, but this will basically be an if statement. We're going to do the parse int. And then after we've done that, if that comes back as fine, just spacing this out to make it easier to read, we check this first. If this comes back as not a number, that is a falsy value, so this will not get checked. So this whole thing will come back as false. If this is true, it means we have an actual number. Then we can look at the number and say, all right, is the number greater than or equal to the minimum? If it is, we're good. We want this to be true. Down here, do the same thing. OK, it is a number. Check to see if it's less than or equal to the max. And we want that to be true as well. OK, try with number one. OK, we got false for this one, so it failed. If I go up to 12, true and true. If I go up to the maximum, true and true still. If I take this and put a value of 340, then I get false as the last one. So both of these things, we want these to be true. And then we could say that, yes, the value that they've given us for this input number is fine. And there you go. There's three of the more common things that you'll be validating. Whether a text field is empty, whether something in a drop-down list has been selected, or if you've got something that's in the appropriate number range. All right. Have fun with that. And thanks for watching.